Hey, who wants to get on stages virtually from the comfort of your own home in front of multiple people at a time? That's what we're going to be talking about today here on the Income Stream Day 176. We're going to be talking about how to land virtual stages. There's all different kinds of virtual stages. We're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about how to get on the inside, perhaps even get asked to speak at these events and hopefully share and amplify our message, get more people to find us, discover us, know, like, and trust us. And of course, you can use all these opportunities as ways to build even more authority in your brand as well. When you speak on different stages, people see you as an authority. And it's something I've been doing since 2011. And of course, more recently doing it virtually. I have a lot of thoughts to share with you. I'm excited about today. If you're here live with me, thank you for being here. My name is Pat Flynn here to help you make more money, save more time and help more people too. If you're here live, say hello to your friends here. If you are watching the replay, you know what to do. Hashtag team replay in the comment section and let's have some fun today. Thanks so much for being here. Let's enjoy this hour together and I'm so grateful for you. Here we go. This is the income stream to help you achieve your dream. Oh, while we keep it clean, this is the income stream. It's the kind of show where you can come and go, but then you leave inspired with no fee required. The income stream with Pat Flynn. Yo, what's up, everybody? Thank you so much for being here. We got Gail, Tamara, dogs are best friends. We got Elton in the house. We got Samson. We got EJ. Great to see you. Consult the blind guy. Yay, it fixed the stream, so I didn't have to start it today. That's fantastic. I also read a little bit about what happened to you earlier, getting scammed. I'm so sorry to hear about that. Um, if you wanted to send me an email, pat at patflynn.com, I can share some thoughts with you about that, or we can talk about it in office hours today as well. So, Again, I appreciate you for being honest and being here. We are all here to support each other. And unfortunately, things like this happen and the best we can do is learn from these situations. However, I would love to help you out as well. So uh, thanks again for being here, everybody. I'm stoked for this conversation because guess what? Today, I'm actually gonna be on a virtual stage. It was a conference uh, that was supposed to be in person, now turned virtual. And I have to give credit and, and thank Sean Cannell from Think Media as well as video influence here, uh, influencers here on YouTube. He's been a guest here on the show before. He has uh, showed up in the chat every once in a while. He's busy today to, uh, though managing his audience there and I'm gonna be on their stage around 1.30 p.m. Pacific today, which I'm really excited about and um, I'm, I'm just super stoked to get in front of that audience because when you have a captivated audience like that who has signed up or who is uh, a part of a group and you have the founder or the conference owner eventually just say like, hey, and now here's Pat Flynn, you gotta watch him and here's what we're gonna be talking about. With all the hype built up, all that stuff, all you have to do is show up and deliver value. And that's what hopefully I'm gonna do later today. I'm just really excited to meet everybody and it just feels different, right? Yes, we can go live on our own stage, like here in a live stream. Perhaps you might even have had experience setting up your own webinars. Maybe you uh, have um, just created YouTube videos. I mean, those are different kinds of ways to show up on stages online. But when you get on somebody else's stage and when you get endorsed and you have the opportunity to, again, be in front of a new audience, I love that. And that's a huge opportunity for you to grow your business, to share your message, to amplify your voice, and to get more people to know, like, and trust you. So first, let's talk about all the different kinds of virtual stages that we might have available to us. One that I think is the easiest that I think we should all be focusing on, but I'm actually gonna be focusing on less today because this isn't, many people wouldn't necessarily qualify this as a virtual stage, but I, I really do believe it is one. And that's podcasts. Getting on other people's podcasts right now is by far the number one way to grow your brand. The relatively speaking easiest type of virtual stage to get on because you get on another person's show, you get to share some of your knowledge, people get to know, like, and trust you, you're getting endorsed by the host, and guess what? We now have over a million podcasts that are out there that you could potentially get on, and these things happen every week, or there are multiple podcasts coming out every single day, right? Uh, in your space even, and so we always have those opportunities. So don't feel like you have to wait till the one event that happens you know, in 2021 in order for you to get on a virtual stage. We do have access to podcasts. And a lot of the things that we're gonna be talking about today as far as building relationships with uh, change makers and decision makers over on the other camp and, and those kinds of things, they, they are relevant to that. But I'm not gonna dive deep into getting on other podcasts specifically, but 
you know, the general sense, getting on other people's stages is definitely what we're going to be uh, talking about. You could also get on other people's YouTube channels as well. Collaborations in that kind of way is great too, as Zenyan Vlada is pointing out. So, you know, other platforms that other people own, that's their stage that you can get invited on. But I'm, I want to talk about more of the, the live setting, right? Because there's a lot of actually things happening right now in the world, as we all know, that are making gr great and drastic changes in the world of speaking and conferences. And like I said, I'm speaking at this event later today where I was in fact supposed to go to Las Vegas to speak on stage in person at. And, you know, it's kind of unfortunate that it's virtual in the sense that, you know, we're not all together in the same room. We're not able to feed off of each other's energy in that same way, although you can still get energy from watching. As you all know, I get energy from you being here on the live stream. But there are speaking gigs out there right now. You don't get the uh, random meet up in the hallway or, or those sort of instances or the, you know, after the event happens, going into the bar and having a conversation with somebody over drinks or coffee or something like those are fun and I'm going to miss those, but we still have opportunities to get on stages. And in fact, now we have more opportunities to get on virtual stages because of what is happening in the world right now. A lot of conferences that were in person are going online and a lot of people are now creating their own events online to take advantage of the fact that we are all missing that now, to take advantage of the fact that communities want to come together and even online, it can still have a drastic impact. And I want to take it one step further than just, you know, showing up on a live stream. Showing up on a live stream is great, especially if you can remain consistent. I'm not saying you have to go daily, but it's been nice being here daily and to show up for you and to see the community to come together for each other, to see the same people show up every day, to see new people show up because other people recommended their friends come in. Like, it's so fantastic. But I want to go one step further and talk about the more formalized speaking gig online. That's what we're talking about today. So what are these like? These are conferences that were once on, uh, in person now coming online. These are conferences that are now being created virtually. And this has been happening. Virtual summits, as sometimes they're called virtual events now they're also being called these are in existence uh, and even more so now there's even online training that you can do this is something that we often don't think about is this idea that there's groups of people who want to learn something you can come on and train them whether it's you setting up a webinar for a person with influence to invite their people in or maybe they have a webinar that's ongoing and you can come in as a guest and again it's that live setting that live training right much like traditionally if you have some expertise or skill or you're a consultant, you might be invited to come into an office to go and teach some employees how to do something special. Well, now we can do the same thing, but again, virtually. Companies still have budgets for training. They need people to train. And if you can demonstrate your expertise and you have a nice setup and it's easy to do, you can make that happen. And again, you can even get paid potentially to do gigs like that where you're training a smaller group of people. I've been invited to come into other people's mastermind groups. So there might be other people in your space, other authorities, other leaders who don't do necessarily training that, uh, like with their employees in that sense, but more um, masterminding, more group collaboration. You can come on as a special guest in uh, many cases. And in fact, for my accelerator group, which is a specialized group of about 10 people in my audience who are making over six figures, I've invited people to come on and share things because I've been looking for other people with different knowledge, with different expertise to come in and help support them in a way that I can't. And so you could potentially become that expert who could come in and train or teach with existing groups that are out there. And there's a lot of groups out there that don't even think about that. So you can actually go in and start that conversation. Hey, can I come into your group to teach you about, I don't know, super fans? I mean, it would behoove you not to do that. I totally missed this word yesterday, yo, so I will be punished tomorrow by playing uh, at least one game of Watch Your Mouth because I didn't say behoove, but I said it today. I'm never going to miss it two days in a row, but I did miss it yesterday. So that's the secret word. If you don't know what we're talking about, I have to in some way incorporate the word behoove every single day, and I didn't do it yesterday. So mad about that, but it's okay. We're going to have some fun tomorrow. So make sure you come in tomorrow. Tomorrow's fun day. Friday, we spin the wheel. We play some games, and I'm going to play a Watch Your Mouth because... I didn't say behoove yesterday. Anyway, it would behoove you not to consider how you maybe as a book writer or somebody who is um, becoming known about a particular topic or you just have this expertise or even just experience. There, it, there could be a way, maybe you are a student of somebody's course and you go in and you pitch the idea that you would love to share in real time 
your experience with their prospects, with their customers, with their students, with their list, right? Any great authority leader would know how powerful that would be. In fact, this has happened in my business where a person comes to me and goes, hey, Pat, I have read your book, Superfans. I've implemented it. Here's what happened. Is there any way I can help support you? And I go, well, absolutely, because it makes me look good, but it also, I wanna give back to you for wanting to offer help for my audience. So maybe you're a student of somebody's course or you are a client of somebody's or perhaps you've done some training with somebody. Go to them, pitch to them how you would love to share in front of their entire audience how you've helped them and get and, and get specific and you know make it a nice presentation and we'll talk more about like what to talk about in a minute but that's that's an amazing idea to get in front of these audiences that exist uh, who may not even really have virtual events normally but this could be an event specifically that would obviously become a great testimonial for them and put you in the spotlight this is what Brian Harris calls the um, teacher's pet strategy or the poster boy strategy the strategy of becoming the person who sets the bell curve essentially that the teacher goes, oh, you need to be like Johnny because Johnny got 100% on his test. I'm not saying you have to be perfect or get 100%, but you know, be the teacher's example. The teacher will share you. And if you have a brand on top of that, guess what? You're gonna get some love in that case as well. I know a lot of people who have done this strategy and done it very well. And in fact, I've been a part of this, not as somebody who's done, well, actually I have. One way that I actually have uh, been found was back in the early days when I first started, I went to Jason and Jeremy hosts of the Internet Business Mastery podcast. I joined their academy. I started implementing as fast as I could. And then I went to them and this wasn't purposeful, but it's the same idea. I said, hey, how can I help you guys? Because you've helped me out so much. And then they flew to San Diego. They filmed me on the beach talking about some of my results and they continually promoted me within their brand. I started noticing my name mentioning on uh, their podcast. I started noticing that I had a special landing page on their website to talk about my story. That was not intentional. But of course, when I eventually started smartpassiveincome.com, they pointed so many people my way. And I think that that was, re that was really cool. Dr. Joel, I don't know if we need to talk about that right now. <laughs> Why are we talking about pat punishments? Maybe, maybe, maybe the next time it could be a different punishment. Anyway, why are we talking about punishment? We're talking about getting on stages today. So conferences, training sessions, masterminds, are we all clear with just the plethora of opportunities that are out there uh, right now and the fact that you can actually make your own virtual gig in that way, being a teacher's pet, having some special knowledge that you can offer to somebody else's audience. Um, you're providing value, you're serving first. And I really love that idea. So chat, let me know if that is making sense because I want you to know these opportunities do exist. They're not going to work if you just wait on them though. That's the that's the key thing here. If we're expecting that we're going to one day get an email out of the blue, that's going to, Don wants me to sing. Rhino Dog wants me to hold spiders. I don't know. A plethora, another se a secret word. Yeah, a plethora. Um, a compendium. <laughs> it's all like SAT words now. Um, you're not just going to get an email out of the blue. You might, and if you are a bigger brand and you put yourself out there quite a bit, you might get asked. In fact, because I've been going live every day, I've been asked to speak on this now, which is pretty cool. Um, but waiting around for the ask is not the right move. You have to take that, as Boris here says, the smart action and be proactive about going and, and finding those opportunities. So they, like, I needed to make sure that we talked about the fact that these opportunities exist, right? These types of stages are out there. You can make these stages from podcasts that you can get onto, conferences that are now going virtual, training sessions, mastermind sessions, or you coming on to, to, to help a creator understand, uh, a creator's audience understand that you've gotten help and you can be found in that way too. Cool. So number two, in addition to just knowing that these stages exist, we need to find these stages, right? And who is it here? Uh, Christopher is asking, well, what's the best way to approach this without being a pain? The best way to answer that question, and this isn't just relevant to virtual stages, it's relevant to anything. How do you best approach anybody without being annoying? And you come, up, you come at it from a place of service first. If you ever ask somebody for something before you've offered something up first, you, you're doing it wrong, <laughs> right? This is, this is the universal signal for you're doing it wrong, right? So, 
we need to provide some sort of value first. And even if we are asking for something, how does that ask actually serve this person or this conference or this group more? That's where, where we need to focus, right? So thank you. Doug here saying, be proactive with the intention to serve. That is the answer, right? Okay, now we have to find the stages. There's obviously many different ways to find these stages, of course. You could look in Google, you know, virtual events about blank, virtual summits. These are all keywords that we could type in, but I prefer to go a much more direct route. And number one, obviously you may know some uh, conferences, virtual stages, or people who you can get on to their audience. Uh, you, you might have a list of those people already. And obviously you wanna start with relationships that you already have. You might have a friend who puts on their own conference or has a group of people and you can just ask, hey, might, it be of service to you to come on and maybe for a half hour teach your audience how to do this thing that I learned how to do. There you go. There's there's an ask right there and then it's somebody that you know already so it's not going to come across very sleazy and you already have a relationship. It's not coming cold with some ill intention. The byproduct is you're going to get on the stage. The byproduct of the service, that intention, right? Tamara says, I'm going to set a goal to reach out to five podcasters and companies per week. Right? I love that, Tamir. I love that. I love the idea that you're setting these goals for yourself and it's measurable, right? It's measurable. I like that. Martin, welcome in. Thanks for being here. Tim, thanks for being here, even if you have to leave early. Zero in Financial says, I'm getting some opportunities through SPI Pro. What an awesome community to serve each other. Thank you for mentioning that. Uh, so SPI Pro is my community. You can find it at smartpassiveincome.com slash pro. It's a paid community. Uh, filtered and, and, and ambitious and um, committed entrepreneurs, if you want to check it out, smartpassiveincome.com slash pro. So in addition to asking people you know already who have stages or have podcasts or have conferences, have groups of people, masterminds that you could serve, ask your friends who've been on other stages. This is a way that I actually get on uh, or have gotten on multiple stages in the beginning of my speaking career. I started speaking in 2011, and yes, that was in person at events. Uh, I am slowing that down now, not just because of COVID, but in fact, I am going to be turning down the dial in terms of how often I travel when things get back to normal and only focusing on bigger events and also local events and doing more things virtually. Um, a one day event that I go to speak at actually takes like four days out of me, and that's four days, not just that I don't have to work on other things, but it's four days away from my family, you know, with travel and recovery and all that. Like, it's it's a lot, right? Now, you might know somebody who's been on another person's stage, and this is where you can go to as well. And like I said, when I first started speaking and I started falling in love with it, I started asking everybody I knew, hey, what events have you spoken at? Or what events do you go to? And that's how I started to build my list of all the different places that are out there that I could potentially go. And this is how I got on the social media marketing world stage. This is how I got onto FinCon. This is how I got onto these other places. It's all about relationships. If you don't have these relationships now, start digging your well now before you get thirsty. Build these relationships because a lot of times I've gotten on stages because I had friendships with people who then built their own stages. Or I had friendships with people who spoke somewhere and I said, hey, can you give me an introduction to that conference director or the decision maker at that conference? And that's, again, how I was able to, to get in the not unusual, but the not traditional way through relationships, through people, right? Um, the traditional way of getting on these stages is to fill out an application, right? There's an application process typically when there's especially these larger events, but in many cases, especially for the more group, uh, smaller, but more powerful masterminds or training programs, like they're not asking for applications. You have to go out there and be proactive or know somebody who has been a part of that, who can give you an introduction or of, of course, know the person who puts those things on. Another great place to discover some of these virtual stages is to go into groups where these people exist, Facebook groups, LinkedIn groups, et cetera, and don't ask, hey, what stages can I speak on? Don't, again, universal, don't do that, right? Go into these groups and say, what is an event online that you really enjoyed or are excited about? Or anybody here ever attend a virtual summit in our industry, which ones are great? You just have to ask to find out which ones they are. You don't have to position it as, oh, tell me the stages I should be speaking on. Of 
course. That's a very self-serving question, as opposed to this question, which actually serves everybody. What industry events are out there that we should be paying attention to? This serves not just you, but the entire group. And it allows for other people to maybe express that they have their own conference. Again, that's a fantastic, super easy way for you to discover these things. Um, again, for those of you coming in late, I'm going to be speaking virtually today. This is why this is on my mind. And it seems many of you are interested in this topic as well. But I'll be speaking on a stage virtually later this afternoon. Sean Cannell, who is a big YouTuber here, he invited me to keynote his stage. I'm going to be on at 1.30 p.m. through the virtual world. And although I am sad that I'm not there in person, I'm excited to go there virtually and knock it out of the park. And hopefully, um, and, and here's the cool thing about virtual. In fact, this is the big advantage that virtual has over in person. People who are going to be watching me later are going to have direct and immediate access to finding my YouTube channel. They just have to open up a web browser to following me on Instagram. They could literally do it right before I go live. I can even tell them, hey, if you're here and you like what you see, what you see, follow me on Instagram. I have some cool reels that I've done and I'm experimenting with that platform. By the way, I did a reel yesterday. This is this is cool and sad at the same time. I did a reel yesterday. I don't know if you all saw it. Let me know in the chat if you did. If not, you should check it out because it is by far apparently the, the, the most incredible thing I've done lately. I don't think it is, but people are liking the entertainment factor within this 15 second clip. And I'm gonna not spoil it for you if you haven't seen it, but go check out my latest reel. In less than a day, in about 18 hours since I published it, it has over 32,000 views. My last six YouTube videos here have not surpassed 32,000 total views. So it's just like, what? Cool, but what am I doing on YouTube here? I love YouTube. And again, you shouldn't be focusing on the numbers, but numbers are important for comparison purposes and numbers are important for trends. And I'm noticing this trend on Instagram Reels. Anyway, I can on my live stream today when I'm on a virtual stage, I can say, hey, by the way, if you wanna check out my latest Reel, check it out. Uh, or I, you know, that could be a call to action. And it's very, very easy for people who are watching you virtually to go and follow your stuff. Much like how it's very simple for a person when you are on another person's podcast, their podcast app is already open. They are able to then listen to your show. This is why if you have a podcast, the best way to grow your show is to get on other people's shows. Because think about it, those apps are already open, people are already listening, plus you're getting the endorsement from the host versus Let's just talk about an ad that has to first capture people's attention with an image. Number two, get people to continue reading. Number three, distract them from what they were doing. Number four, get them to click. Number five, and then click play to listen. And then number six, spend enough time to actually, in fact, get interested. Again, you interrupted them from something else that they were doing versus a podcast that they were already listening to that is now endorsing you, the app's already open, et cetera, right? Cool. Um, I get it. I'm getting a lot of questions already. Like, how, where are you getting your, how are you so creative on reels? And I'm like, I'm just finding other TikToks and reels that I think are so funny and interesting. And I'm adopting them to podcasting and entrepreneurship. Like I'm not creating these ideas from scratch. Um, there was a nut, there was one that was like top mistakes that photographers made. I was like, okay, I'm going to do one. That's like top mistakes podcasters make not hitting record and making a funny, funny little skit about it. Anyway, uh, where are Reels on Instagram? Yes, Stephanie. Reels is Instagram's ripoff of TikTok, like literally TikTok, uh, literally that. So anyway, we talked about the different types of stages that are virtual. Then we talked about where to find these stages. Of course, podcasts would be very easy to find because you could just go to podcast directories. Um, you can ask your friends what podcast uh, stages or other places they've been on, or um, they might even have groups of people that you can serve as well. Before we ask to get onto these platforms, before we ask to go onto these virtual stages, my recommendation is to find out the history of these stages. So if there's a virtual event that happens, maybe it came from an in-person event, knowing that's important, but going into their history and oftentimes these events that were once online or, excuse me, once offline, but now online, they have 
the 2019 version of the page, the 2018 version of the page, right? They've done this event for years and you can see, in fact, who attended those events as far as speakers. Those people obviously have spoken on those stages before. Those people obviously have a connection in one way, shape or form to that conference. You may find that in that roster, you know somebody. So after you find these stages, maybe you can utilize a relationship that you have with somebody who happened to be speaking on that stage to initiate an introduction, right? And don't be afraid to ask for that introduction. But anyway, that's something that we can, um, hello Fledlings says, Yahanza, good to see you here. Thank you so much. Where are you, where are you calling in from? Um, I'm in, uh, just starting to get the hang of posting an IG. Nice, Rhino, that's awesome. Yes, definitely a TikTok knockoff for sure, but pretty interesting. And we already have Instagram accounts. Adding a TikTok-like function on top of that, I've seen is proving very, very nice versus TikTok kind of starting from scratch. It's own little ecosystem is there. Cool. So find these events online that have happened before and look at their history, not just for who has spoken at those events, because then you might have an, uh, a relationship, but it's nice to know the caliber and also the kinds of people that kind of show up and, and, and the kinds of people they're interested in. But number two, you can also see their agendas from previous years. And these agendas are interesting to look at because you can see not just like what time breaks were, and what time all the speaking things were, but you get to find out what was spoken about. So you can get a sense of the kinds of topics that they want on their stages. You can get a sense for what they are talking about. You can get a sense for what has also already been spoken about. So you can either come up with something different in your pitch or come up with something better and or come up with something better, right? Oh, I saw that in 2019, you had a um, somebody come on the stage to talk about Instagram TV. Well, as you know, Instagram TV has changed and now there's Instagram Reels. Might you consider having me come onto your group to uh, give you a little bit of a training on Reels now, right? Oh my gosh, yes, this would be so helpful. Our audience loved that chat about Instagram last year. So we definitely need a refresher on that. So I'd love to invite you in this year. And you see kind of how this works now. So we can actually use all the data and, and interesting information we have about this previous event. If we if there is public information about it, and again, these events that are now transitioning to online from offline or events that are just now happening online, um, you can discover not just through previous event agendas and schedules, but you can actually go into those people's uh, you know, a podcast archive, if you're going to get on other people's podcasts, if that's the stage you're, you're shooting for other people's podcasts, well, look in their archive and do the same thing. What shows have they done recently? You, they probably don't want to do another show like that. But what shows maybe were the most popular from last year? How can you come back with something new and fresh about that topic? Because you know that their audience had once heard about it. And now you can come in with a bigger, more authoritative, more updated and fresh perspective, if that makes sense. My Castle Life says, super informative. Bruh. I almost clicked the wrong one because my stickers are coming off. What the heck? I guess the uh, post-it and stickers don't stay on forever. And that's the point, I guess. Cool. Now let's talk about getting an introduction. How might we start to initiate this ask of us getting on these stages, right? So maybe let's talk about podcasts just a little bit first before we get into the virtual conference or virtual stage, uh, virtual gigs. Um, although there's going to be some crossover, I think podcasts in particular, because they're the easiest stage to get on. And number two, there's sort of that expectation that a podcaster is going to get some people to ask, hey, could I be on your show? Let's go there. Again, start with relationships you already have. It's definitely what we want to do. But even if you don't have a relationship, find some connection with that person. Maybe you went to the same school. Maybe you both have kids. Maybe you both are in the same industry and, 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 and believe a certain thing together. Maybe there is some religious commonality. It doesn't really matter. Having some form of connection is important for twofold. Number one, just having that connection is going to help you stand out. But number two, in your messaging, it's going to help you stand out immediately from just another person who's who's coming in for an ask, right? 
when you can personalize that message, and I would absolutely personalize it, try to include some sort of connection. Maybe you're both from the same town or both follow the same sports team or play the same sport, whatever. It might sound like it doesn't matter, but it absolutely does. And the example I like to give is if you actually go to conferences, um, you might know what it's like to meet people for the first time, like in a setting like that. And when you meet people for the first time like that, the conversations are always very surface level, right? They're like, hey, how are you? What, what do you do? What's your name? Like very surface level, right? But the moment you find somebody who has a common interest, a commonality, something the same as you, you immediately latch on. You're best friends and you hang out the entire time. I, this happens time and time again. It's just been very interesting to see what that common thing is that changes throughout the years. Because in, back in the day, it was like having newborns, right? And, and when I started speaking, I had a, a two-year-old and a one-year-old and so, bless my wife, by the way, um, she let me go and talk. And then at these conferences, I would like find other people who left their wife at home with their kids or, or, or their husband at home with their kids. And I'd be like, okay, let's chat because this is hard and different and, and new for us. And of course, we'd connect. Um, I would find people who were also in marching band, right? Who would just like, we would super nerd out about that thing. And even though we didn't know each other, we knew each other because of that commonality, right? So these common items can, can go a very long way. I, in fact, I talked about this uh, in my book, Super Fans, and how even those intros that I have in the beginning of my podcast, although they might sound kind of weird and random, um, they are me. And for those of you who don't know what I'm talking about, at the beginning of my podcast, in every single podcast, I have my voiceover guy read a fun, weird, random little fact about me. And I'll tell you, I go to conferences, and people talk to me like we've been friends for years, and they always mention the one or two of those facts that they connected with. So when it comes to getting connected with others, I do a little bit of digging. I do a little bit of research. I go into their Twitter, and Twitter is where I often go to see what's the latest thing that they're into or talking about. And if it's, of course, something political or religious, I don't go like, yeah, I believe the same thing as you. That other guy's terrible. Um, no. But I go into their history. I, I check out a little bit of their media. What are they taking picture, pictures of? Um, you know, maybe they're into gardening and I might be like, Hey, I just started a garden. Maybe, you, you know, uh, I, I, am I'm, I'm, I'm seeing that you're growing some cucumbers. I haven't grown cucumbers yet myself, but anyway, I wanted to reach out to you because I know that you put on this conference and I have this specialty in this space and I'd love to offer up, um, some time to help your audience in that way, right? Always come from a place of service. But again, that little connection can go a very, very long way. It's awesome to listen to you. All your videos are very informative. Thank you, Makut. Appreciate you for that. I call research ethical stalking. That's kind of cool, Gail. A um, little creepy, but you're right. You're right. Ethical stalking. Stalker has a very, very negative connotation, obviously, but um, it's the idea of you're, you're, you're doing research so that, and, and, and you should do this because this is how you help people understand that you have something to offer and that you're going to be different. And guess what? Most people aren't doing this. So this ethical stalking, if you want to, if you want to go along with that, can be very helpful for you to provide the value that you, you need to provide, right? It's almost like marketing. It could be used for good and it could be used for bad. Scarcity tactics, ooh, terrible. But if you have a cure for somebody's disease, if you have the ability to serve people who are in, who are in pain in some way, shape, or form, it's almost your obligation to use these marketing tactics so that they will be convinced and actually have their lives change as a result. It's when you promote stuff that doesn't matter, that only is for you because you want to earn a commission, that's where things fail. And I want to live in a world where everybody is selling things because they know it's of service to others. We can together make the internet a better place and that's what I want to happen. Thanks to Nicole Dean for introducing that concept to me back in 2009, the idea of, hey, we're here to make the internet a better place. And many times that does include selling your item, but only if it can help people, right? Cool. We're a little over halfway already. I'm gonna take a little stretch break. This might be a good time. We have Dr. Joella here who also, also inspires me. Maybe a little shoulder roll if you've been sitting for a while. Maybe a little neck roll, right? Maybe a little stretch. So next we're gonna talk about more about how to sort of get people to say, yes, I want you here, right? And again, like I keep saying, when you have an introduction from somebody or somebody who has already provided service to that person or group of people, they have an endorsement for you, 
well, that that that's always going to be better, right? This is, again, why if I had a DeLorean, I would go back in time and I would say, hey, Pat, meet and talk to and befriend as many people as possible. Serve as many people as you can, right? Even if they give you nothing back, because there's going to be times where some of the, some sometimes you might need something or you want something. And if you've already served them, it's going to be so much easier to ask, right? We dig our well now, right? Stretch. Ugh. Good stuff, guys. Maybe we should do this like traditionally in every single. And it's funny because I'm going to be speaking virtually later today. But typically when I speak on stage, I get pretty nervous in person. And if you've ever seen me on stage or backstage, I'm, I'm pacing back and forth. I'm typically going over my intro dozens of times because if I can get the intro down, I know that I can I can get into the flow after that. But you'll usually see me like bouncing around, getting the blood flowing, like doing some air boxing or something like that. Um, and a few people have captured me on camera doing that. It's just something I do. I also do some voice exercises. Your voice is going to be really important, especially if you're a podcaster. I've taken voice lessons and training before. Uh, actually, it was done over Skype through a woman um, named Carrie in Australia. And it was just a Skype voice sort of lesson thing that was happening for about eight months. And it was awesome. It taught me so much about how to use my voice, how to breathe properly, and how to make sure I don't strain my voice. Because if I speak all the time, not just as a podcaster, but if I'm on stages and I'm going to events and I'm networking and, you know, the networking parties are always on those places that are way too loud and the music's bumping. So you have to learn how to speak in a way that you're going to have endurance. And it's helped out so, so much. So anyway, I'm kind of getting off track here. But you got to train your voice too, especially if you're going to be using it, right? I need like, I need like voice insurance. Is that a thing? I don't know. Cool. Okay, so get a, get an introduction, or if not, get on another person's radar, right? Get on another person's radar by having some sort of connection to them and really understanding how you and what you want to talk about serves them, right? And this takes a little bit of research, understanding of what happens on those stages or what has happened on that stage already, or what that group is interested in, or what that uh, podcaster uh, wants to talk about that they haven't talked about yet, or maybe was once popular and hasn't been talked about for a while. It what like literally I get dozens of people asking me to be on their show or to have their information on my show every day. Dozens of emails. People, hey Pat, I have this expertise. I want to be on your show. And it's just like, I don't even know who you are yet. So spend some time again building these relationships. Or what really works for me sometimes is when I get an introduction from somebody who I trust. If Sean Stevenson comes to me and goes, Hey Pat. I know this person, I think they'd be great for your show. I'm going to at least think about it, right? Versus, and again, most people are getting, especially podcasters uh, who are a little bit more well-known are getting bombarded. So we need to look for other entry points, right? So an entry point from a friend or a colleague. Another entry point is through a direct message. A direct message on a social media platform. You, if you, if you follow me for any bit of time, and even yesterday we did a little bit of a demonstration um, you know that I love using the direct messages, right? You slide into the DMs and you go in there and you introduce yourself. You let people know or who this person is, hopefully a decision maker over there. Um, that's the other part about this. You might find through these relationships that you have that, you know, the conference owner isn't the person who actually makes the decisions. It's another person. And if you find out who that person is, that's who you want to get in with. That's who you want to uh, learn about. That's who you want to serve right? Because then you can empower them to look good to their director, right? If you can come up with a really great topic and a, and a person can go, oh my gosh, check out who I found. I found this guy, Pat Flynn, who's going to talk about this. That makes them look good, right? So that decision maker, you want to serve them as well in the position that they're in. So yeah. <laughs> How are we doing today, chat? Are we, are we having fun? Are we learning some stuff? I hope that you didn't come here expecting like the one trick that's going to solve all these things and get you on 50 stages tomorrow. If you know me, you know that that's not what I teach because that's not realistic. Can happen. You can write a piece of, uh, you, you can write something or film something that goes viral tomorrow and get on all those stages. But that's highly unlikely. That's an outlier. That's a unicorn. We want to go the way that works. This stuff works. It takes work for things to work though. 
And what's gonna help you stand out from everybody else, what's gonna help you succeed is actually implementing these things. And what's nice about this, it's, it's not like a, hey, this is adding four hours of work every week to my schedule type of thing. Like if you were to start a YouTube channel or if you were to start a podcast or something like that, right? This kind of stuff is like, hey, for 30 minutes a week, I'm gonna send out feelers. I'm going to reach out to my friends and colleagues. I'm going to send direct messages uh, through video to these decision makers to see if they'd be interested. And just kind of maybe even 15 minutes a week, right? Just it does, it's, it, this, is, this, this is a when you wanna do it kind of thing, but it's not gonna happen unless you do it. And it takes some work, it takes some time, it takes you understanding that you're going to get a no. You are going to get no's. This is the thing that I was really struggling with when I first started speaking. I didn't wanna ask to get on anybody else's stages because I was afraid to get the no. But the truth is you are accepting the no if you don't try. It is a guaranteed no, right? There's no way to predict the future, but there is actually one way to do it is to do nothing. You do nothing new, you're gonna get nothing new. You have to make changes to get changes. We cannot expect things to just land on our doorstep. It can happen sometimes. We see those stories all the time, but unfortunately the media, we, podcasters, bloggers, all of us blow those stories up and they become amazing unicorns that we all shoot for when really there are tried and true methods that do work, right? Cool. I hope this can be more than one day because it's good to hear review from others who are successful in getting speaking engagement and challenges they are facing. Yeah, I mean, I wanna do I wanna do multiple kinds of days like this, right? I'm silenced because I'm listening and learning. Isn't DM on social media hard because big accounts have so many DMs and they don't read them all? Yes, but you're guaranteed a no if, by the way, didn't I reply to you? I have a big account, I would say, and I replied to you. Not everybody's going to, but that doesn't mean it can't happen, right? All right. Just seeing, I see in the chat here, people laughing. My castle life, are you laughing at me? Did I do something? Was I looking at the wrong camera? Anyway, no worries. All good, even if I was. I'm totally out of sync. I thought today was game day. Today's not game day. Tomorrow's game day. I like that name, game day. I'm gonna, I'm gonna use that in the thumbnail. Today's game day. Friday's our game day, although Sundays are usually known as game day uh, in the football world. Okay, you know me, that doesn't count. <laughs> Jeff says, really appreciate the unicorn encouragement. This is good form of hustling that you are promoting. Hard work in the right way equals the right results. Yes, we can, we've talked about hustle before and hustle culture here. I think putting in the work where you know it's required is hustle. This includes family. This includes yourself personally. This includes taking breaks. Hustling to me is making sure you're putting the time and effort in where you know you should be spending it and not anywhere else. That's hustle. Hustle doesn't mean only get three hours of sleep and work on projects that you just absolutely hate doing because that's how you succeed. That's not. That's how you That's how you burn out, right? Um, but there is something to be said for micro hustling on things in the Gary V sense of things. Like, hey, if you've got a project to work on, you know you need to finish. Like maybe for one day I am going to stay up a little bit later and get it done and not think about and focus on anything else. I'm going to hustle on that in this moment, but that's not your life. Cool. Um, then when we get to the point where we actually have a connection with somebody, and by the way, if you are trying to connect with people or send a DM to, um, Here's a trick that's worked for me a couple of times. You want to get on the radar of a big influencer or a big leader. They have a big account. Sending a direct message to them, probably not going to work. But go on LinkedIn and see who works for them. You might be able to find, you know, promoter for or director of marketing for or HR at or, or what have you. You know, you can actually go to that person's. One, one time I went to that influencer's website down to the bottom, I saw their company name, right? Because company names, like my company name is Flindustries, but I don't really 
promote or share that, but that's my technical umbrella company, Flint Industries, LLC. And um, now I have two companies, SPI Media and then Flint Industries, LLC. We kind of branched out and began. Again, all the business insider business things, like that's that's all back-end stuff. That's all tax strategy and all that all that kind of crap. Uh, the front end, what you see is smartpassiveincome.com, SPI Pro, all those kinds of things. So when you want to connect with other people in a company, go and find the actual company name. It may be on their terms of service page. It may be just legit at the bottom of their website, you know, Flint Industries, LLC, or copyright, whatever. So then you can take that to LinkedIn and you can find that company and find out who else might be a decision maker there. Maybe you don't have access to the actual creator or the person with the large Instagram account, but you can find now the name of the person who actually works for that person and maybe find them on Instagram and send them a direct message. And I wouldn't approach it like, hey, I found you on LinkedIn because you work for so-and-so. Now you're just using them, right? Now you're just using them and you don't wanna use them in that way. What you might wanna do is reach out to them and say, hey, I see that you run a conference and I was just curious if I could throw my name in the hat for talking about this because I see that you guys love it. Like going through them and giving them something that they can then take to their higher up and make them look good. If you could make the person who works for the influencer look good, you're going to be more likely to do it, right? Or, or, or to get it to, to happen, if that makes sense. What's Samson doing? I did 12 DMs yesterday. Nine have replied already, right? Did you do that because that's what I taught you to do? Or you've seen me do that? Like, and I know you do that anyway. You've sent me a lot of DMs and you're good at that. So it's not necessarily outside of your comfort zone to do that. But well done making time for it and making it happen. Happen. Elton says, I would think connecting with personal assistant helps too. Uh, he or she can enlighten on the style of owner, et cetera. I try to work my LinkedIn profile and it works for some people. Yeah. So again, finding the decision makers, going the back end route, the non-traditional route, is going to work. But whether you go that route or you go the traditional route of filling out an application because they're, hey, we're looking for speakers at our event, you know, fill out this application. Um, good comments here from Jennifer. Man, you guys have so, you, you guys provide so much value uh, to each other here in the chat. It just makes me so happy. Um, if we can get a thumbs up before we finish up, just in the lower right hand corner, right below the video, if you're watching this on YouTube, just we able to thumbs up. Let's see if we can get to 100 before we finish up today. I'm not quite sure. We have a little bit lower attendance today, but that's okay. I expected that because of the topic, but we know the go-getters are in here or watching the replay, so thank you. This was all you, says Samson. Thank you, man. Appreciate you. Well done, by the way. See, the stuff I teach, it's not hard. You just got to make time to do it. I don't sell magic buttons, though. Now I'm thinking of shirts that magically button themselves. I don't know why I'm thinking about that anymore. Now, whatever you choose to do or however you get into the possibility of you getting on these stages, we need to sell our position. We need to sell our talk, whatever it is that we're like. The relationship is key. That's app, that's like 80% of the work is the relationship and the connection and, and how you can help these people. But your specific talk or what you'll be speaking about when you're on that person's podcast or when you're on that virtual stage. If it's not something that you've already spoken about before or know sells, and not sells like you're gonna make money from it, but sells as in it really convinces people that, oh, this is exactly what we need. That's what we need to work on. You need to work on your pitch. It's a whole different conference, or excuse me, that's a whole different income stream that we could talk about. How do we pitch our thing? And in fact, we've talked about this quite a bit, but we need to position it in a way that helps that person or helps that audience and we need to sell it we need to put our marketing cap on and we need to give them our best one or two sentences in order for them to go oh that's exactly what we were looking for so this means much like how if you're selling a product you need to know who your audience is if you can better understand who's going to be at that conference or who's going to be listening to that podcast or who's going to be in that little mastermind group that you're going to be presenting to the more likely it is you're going to succeed case in point i was able to speak in front of Stu McLaren's mastermind. About 30 or 40 people that came to San Diego. No, it wasn't just because I was in San Diego. Uh, thanks for the thumbs down, by the way. I hope you have a better day. Still helps with the algorithm, so appreciate you for that. 
Um, but let's turn that frown upside down, my friend. Anyway, I was able to get on to Stu McLaren's mastermind group to talk about super fans because I positioned it as a way to have people who are in your memberships. Because remember, Stu McLaren teaches memberships. He helped me a lot with SPI Pro. But in his mastermind, these are all people who have membership communities. So am I going to pitch my super fans talk to him the same way I would do it at Social Media Marketing World? No, absolutely not. I'm going to position it. And I'm even going to include stories that are different, that are tailored to his specific audience. People building membership communities. And it's very it's a very clear sell. When you build super fans, you have members for life, right? People who are going to continually pay and not just pay you the normal fee, but super fans may be able to go into a higher tier level within your community for just a special group of people, right? Like Club 33. I talked about Club 33 at Stu McLaren's Mastermind. Does anybody here know what Club 33 is? Club 33 is a specialized club within Disneyland. People pay a membership fee for that, and it's a high executive level, like exclusive five-year waiting list sort of club where you pay, I think, twelve to 14000 or $15,000 or even $20,000 a year to be a part of it. But guess who are members of Club 33? Super fans, right? Who are willing to pay that? It's just a small number of people, but when you build for those super fans, people will get to that level where they're going to want to invest even more with you in that way, right? So Club 33 would be super dope. And I have seen pictures of what Club 33 get access to and all the special things that they get. Um, fancy dining above Pirates of the Caribbean, not the inside character. Like there are special dining rooms, 12 course meals that people in this club get inside of Disneyland where they just meet other super fans with them too. Yet near Pirates of the Caribbean is there's a special door that has the door the 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 the, the number 33 on it and there's a special button that you click in there's like a secret password. I don't even know how they get in. But yes, right? Club 33 baby. So again, this is how I was able to structure my presentation specific to that tailored audience, right? the audience of people who had memberships and using specific examples like that within my presentation, which I wouldn't have used at Social Media Marketing World. I mean, I could use them, but they wouldn't have much of an impact as now uh, at Social Media Marketing World using examples of how now that your super fans are going to become customers for life and they won't have to read your sales pages and they're going to defend you from trolls on social media. And I use those examples at Social Media Marketing World instead, right? Yes, the food. Pat, do you go to the Disney conference? Um, so uh, D23 is what it's called. It happens biannually in uh, Anaheim. And um, I have not been to that conference yet, but I definitely want to go for sure. Martin says, I'd just like to say I'm happy to charge $20,000 a year to anyone here who wants to join my membership site, just in case you want that. No pressure. <laughs> well, for people in my accelerator group, it's a $30,000 a year commitment. And there's multiple people in there because of that particular audience, who I'm serving, what they get, et cetera. Anyway, it's not a, it's not a line, but it's, it's a small group of people, right? Cool. So we got five minutes left. Hopefully this chat was a nice introduction to, number one, the virtual stages that exist out there. Everything from podcasts to mastermind groups to training opportunities to webinar, just teaching opportunities in front of other audiences. Um, number two, how to find the stages referrals, friends, connections, Google, of course, but within groups as well to have other members of that group who you might not even know go, oh, this conference was great, or oh, I was here recently, etc. Going into the history of these stages and understanding who has spoken at these stages to get another sense of who else you might have a connection with who has been involved in that, or what topics they've spoken about. What was, what was the agenda like last year, or who else has come to train these people before? How can you level it up one? Then showing up um, in, a, in a way that allows you to position the talk in a way that's really going to serve them to help them understand. Um, and, and, and another great way to get into one, like if there's a major conference that you want to get into, maybe the first year, even virtually, you serve as a moderator, right? You help provide service to this audience. This is how 
people like uh, Dan Patrick Norton, who you might have seen here in the chat before. Hey, Archer, thank you so much for the super chat, my friend. Uh, Dan Patrick Norton has volunteered at FlynnCon, and so have many others. And as a result, like, I know who he is now, and we work together now. He repurposes some of my videos and all this kind of stuff. So maybe before you get on those stages, you help that stage first. So it, it, again, it's a long-term situation. Many of you have also validated that here as well, the relationships, the long game. But maybe you volunteer to serve this audience first as a volunteer, as a moderator, as, I don't know, maybe you have SEO expertise and you go, hey, you know what? I would love to speak at your event one year, but for right now, I'd just love to offer my SEO services for your landing page because I want to make sure as many people come to this conference as possible. What a huge value add that is. Comment, thanks for the two bucks. I appreciate it, my friend. Um, so yeah, serve that audience first. How might you become a volunteer in some way, shape, or form first before you get into some of the more um, actual speaking situations? Plus, that gives you an opportunity to get in with other people, right? When I've gone to events, I've not just gone to speak and speak in front of that audience, but when I go to speak to these events, I'm actually getting to know the other speakers as well. And many times these conferences will indeed bring these speakers together um, and allow people to um, come in and hang out a little bit, right? Which is pretty cool. So anyway, I appreciate y'all. I think we're all blaming Karma for the thumbs down for some reason. I don't know why. Dan is here. Volunteering at events is the best way I've built high level relationships. There you go. Proof in the pudding right there. Elton says, I don't mind to volunteer at FlynnCon event one day. I'm, I'm getting a little worried about next year because it's September. You have to plan these events ahead of time. July of next year is when FlynnCon 2 is scheduled. Are we going to be allowed to have events? Do these events, are they going to be treated in the same way? Are we going to be required to have all the seats in the audience six feet apart? I don't know. I'm scared. But anyway, I'm here. I'm going to continue to show up for you. We're on the road to 365 people, but today we are at 176. Thank you for joining me today. I appreciate you so, so much. Hope to potentially see some of you, even those of you who left thumbs down. I just saw, I saw you do that. I saw you do that. And I just hope you have a better day. Thank you for helping with the algorithm anyway. Um, but I appreciate you for being here. Thumbs up or thumbs down. And I look forward to seeing some of you maybe today at Grow With Video Live at 1.30 p.m. I'll be on stage. I'm super stoked on that. And I'm really excited to um, see some of you there and, you know, hopefully rock it out for you. Anyway, uh, thanks so much. Good luck to you and the stages that you're going to be on and start building those relationships now. Thank you so much for today. And again, just to make sure, realize it would behoove you not to at least start making some introductions about yourself, reaching out to other conferences, people who you might know to see how you might be able to get in front of those audiences. Just wanted to do it a second time just to make sure I got it in. But anyway, tomorrow's game day, everybody. Please come in if you can. We're going to have some fun. patflin.com slash the income stream. Thanks for, uh, so much for joining me today. Team Flynn, I appreciate you. And as always, Team Flynn for the win. Peace out. This is the income stream to help you achieve your dream. All while we keep it clean. This is the income stream. It's the kind of show where you can come and go. But then you leave inspired with no fee required. The income stream with Pat Flynn. Thank you for the plethora of likes and the compendium of chats today. Um, whatever it is, it's good. Um, I love you. Thanks for coming in. Peace out. Much love. And as always, Team Flynn for the win. Bruh.